What's up, son? So I got to record this again. It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today we have a vlog style. And essentially, what's going on is I have an HD60 Elgato uh, Pro here that's not working in my Ryzen system. It's been bugging me a lot, and it's finally just to the breaking point that I decided that I want to go ahead and stop main rigging the Ryzen system and move on to something else. Now, what I was originally going to do is I really liked my 7700K system that's now the test bench. So I kind of was just going to go ahead and sell it and replace it. And then I looked up pricing and so on. I figured it'd be pretty easy to sell the 1800X and the GT7 motherboard from Biostar for about $500 for the combo. And it didn't take long for somebody to take a bite. And he said he was going to pull all those parts out and come pick up the motherboard or his old parts. So I asked what his old parts were. And he said that that was a 6800K and a motherboard that he thinks is dead. So I was like, hmm, interesting, interesting. So you say. So what I did is I was like, well, I'll take $300 off of the, no, I'll take, sorry, $200. Give me $300 plus your old motherboard and CPU. And I will give you the 1800X and that motherboard. And we'll go ahead and swap them out. And we'll I'll take that money off. So I'm taking a bet here. Either the CPU and the motherboard are dead, and I'm, I, I'm at a total loss. Or one or the other's dead, and I have $300 to replace it, and I come out even. Best case, and we'll have to see, but best case is going to be that he just had another faulty part or some other issue was going on, and we end up with a full system that's ready to go and we save a few hundred bucks. So I'm pretty excited to go through this what I would call barter slash gamble and I always kind of have fun with these gambles. I was actually working on a settings video for you guys here um, about Dreadnought and then I was like no I'm going to do this video instead this weekend just because I wanted to do something that I was excited about and I'm kind of getting like not that excited about the benchmark videos even though I enjoy do the, doing them they are a lot of work and that video is coming but let's get to work I'm going to shut this system down I've already transferred all my files off and we're going to take it apart so let's get going <laughs> back and here is the loot we essentially got rid of the Ryzen 1800X and the Biostar X370 GT7 motherboard and we retrieved oh and we did get rid of the RAM because he had 32 gigabytes of uh, Dominator Platinum and since this board's quad channel and the other one's dual channel and it would just be easier if you just swapped the board with the memory timings already set and everything. We went ahead and made that trade as well. This is a little bit faster. This is 3200 megahertz. And that RAM was 2800 megahertz. Then we have the 6800K, which I guess would retail for like 340 somewhere around there right now. And we have the Strix X99, Asus Strix X99 gaming uh, motherboard, and it is ATX, which runs for about 300. The thing is, is he's pretty sure one of these isn't good. So, to top it off, he gave me $300 cash. $300 cash. So what we have to do now is figure out if we either won the lottery or lost the bet. And if we won the bet, we're way ahead of the game. If we lost on either the CPU or the motherboard, then of course we will still be about even because I could, if I lost the CPU, which I highly doubt because the CPUs, uh, Intel CPUs just are rock solid. 
If we lost the CPU, then we're out about 40 bucks. If we lost the motherboard, we're not out at all. Taxes, essentially. And there's very low likelihood that we lose both, and then we're out $200. So we're going to start to get it all together and figure out where we're at. It's getting a little late, but uh, I'm going to get started. All right, what's up, sons? I am low on audio, so we're just gonna get right through this. Systems together. I did put it into my Thermaltake Core P5 because it was just simpler because I don't have, and I, I could have taken apart the test bench, but that seemed silly because they're both kind of test benches. Anyways, let's see if it powers on. There we go. We do have lights, so that's good. Lights are always good. We're gonna go ahead and hit power, see what happens. So I might have the power switch on wrong. I probably do. Damn. Uh, power switch. Thought it was that one. Maybe I'm off by one. Cause we should get something. Not getting anything to the power supply. Huh. What happened here? Let's try that one. Ah, I swapped them. There you go. I swapped the power and reset on accident. We were stuck at zero, zero on the motherboard, but we do have power. Okay, so nothing's coming on. We're gonna troubleshoot a tad here. Alrighty, I'm back, so not everything went super smooth. Unfortunately, we did have a Q code of 00 on the ASUS Strix X99 motherboard, which is right here. There we go. This is a Q code 00. I tried using that BIOS flashback, which is a cool feature that ASUS has. I do like that feature. <clears throat> but it doesn't seem to help you if you have like a CPU error code like that and we just couldn't get it to post. So I went ahead and did an Amazon same day order. So I do want to clarify a lot of the purchasing decision for the ASRock was based on initially price and same day order. The board came in at $219, but for that $219, it has some pretty impressive features. You have uh, dual NICs, which I am really happy with, which um, of course teaming is not supported in Windows 10, but there are some other things we can do with that. Also, we could implement something with Hyper-V or what I'll probably end up doing honestly is hooking up a Synology and running iSCSI over that NIC if I need some more uh, scratch storage for editing, et cetera, et cetera. It does have dual Ultra M.2, so dual M.2s over uh, NVMe. So I would be able to technically do, you know, two M.2 over NVMe, provided I had enough PCIe lanes, et cetera, et cetera. It does have the water pump editor. It has the Purity Sound 3 feature, which is the Realtek ALC 1150 audio. It is a really good audio uh, setup. Fortunately, even though I don't quite use it very much, I usually use the Focusrite for pretty much input and output all the time for editing. It has two USB 3.1s and of course USB-C port and it does support Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So this is the first motherboard I've ever had that has supported Bluetooth. I uh, don't even know if I'll ever use it, but it's cool to have for the price. It's, it's pretty hard to beat, it really is. And we did actually post with it. So I was nervous that the CPU uh, code that I was reading that the Strix X99 boards apparently are known to take out the CPU when the board goes out. It's a power issue and that's a pretty scary thought. If it would have, that would have been a bummer, but the, the CPU wasn't tampered with, meaning that even if there was an issue there, I would have been able to RMA the CPU, surprisingly. Another thing is, is this warranty for the Strix board 
was never registered and was purchased in August. So it does look like I will be able to fill out an RMA, which I've already done, and started the process to RMA the Asus Strix X99 board. I did want to make a couple other notes. I think some of the ways they were able to drop the price on this is there's no, uh, there's no RGB LEDs. And for me, that's a thank God, because I hate them. And the other thing that I don't like is that, it, or the other thing that to note, but something that I don't like is that the board is white. And my system has always been 50 shades of gray, and now it's got white, which I guess is a shade of gray. But it kind of is breaking my theme because it's supposed to be kind of matte and back. And I think uh, to offset it, I think I'm just going to redo some cable mod cables and maybe have gray, black like I already have, and then like a couple strands of white just kind of pop it off and sync everything up. That's kind of what I was thinking. Sync everything up. Color, color coordinate a little bit there. So far, I'm super happy because everything booted up. The Elgato is working, uh, which was the whole point of this, really, to be honest with you all. The focus right's working. It's not doing any of that popping shit anymore that was happening before either. So that's super awesome. I don't have to worry about that anymore. And everything seems to be functioning properly. Memory went straight to 3200. These are all notes that I'm making because these are things that don't work on Ryzen. And I've... <coughs> I think it's good to note for you all that there are some issues with Ryzen that you need to be made aware of that are don't seem to be pointed out quite enough there and I, I'm going to come up with a video to point them out for you guys in a concise video some of the downfalls of Ryzen because I've covered most of the uh, I guess good parts about Ryzen and the gaming performance did get a lot better while I was moving through you know doing all of that testing and having that Ryzen system since the day of release and a, a lot of the game performance got way better, which is awesome. I, I think that was good. It's just, it still has a long ways to go right now. And hopefully it will get there. I don't know if I would recommend it to anyone that isn't ready to deal with it. Meaning if it's your first time building a system, you might just want to go with an i5 and you know, a GTX 1060 or an RX 480. Call it a day for now, get your feet wet, something that you're not going to have a, a total ton, butt ton of like BIOS updates, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, driver hunting and troubleshooting, it it's probably wouldn't be the best situation for a lot of people that are in that kind of setting. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And as always, I will see you next Tuesday.